Hi everyone, it's JC at Motorcycle Superstore and welcome to our December Kickstart video, your home for all things moto. We have a great product selection this month, some items that we don't even have in stock but we're expecting to hit the marketplace, and some others that are available but are great for wintertime riding applications. Now, we're going to talk about these in more detail, but keep in mind, we are in the holiday season so we have all kinds of holiday gift guides that are available at MotorcycleSuperstore.com. But we're here to talk about what's in front of us, so let's take a closer look at these. Before we do that, however, the winners from November subscribe and win giveaway. For the two gift cards, that's going to be Jody Cleland and Ryan Bross. Congratulations. Our grand prize, which was an Atlas original neck brace, that's going to Len Kutro. Now, you guys have 30 days to send me an email, YouTube winner at motorcycle-superstore.com. Let me know that you received this or let me know that you've seen it and we'll go ahead and ship those products back to you. Congratulations, thank you for participating. And remember, we're gonna reveal the new giveaway items at the end of the show. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the street bike items that we wanna talk about today. Let's start it off with a couple of all-weather gear pieces that you can see on my left. We have the Speedy Voyager 3 jacket and some pants from Scorpion. Two different manufacturers, but essentially they're accomplishing the same types of goals. Now this is the Speedy Voyager 3. It's going to be a multi-season jacket. Now you don't have to be nearly as badass as this gentleman is. However, what you're going to appreciate when you get out on the bike with this is all of the adjustability. Now this is the type of jacket, like we mentioned, that's four seasons. So it's going to have liner system on the interior. It has a 150 gram insulated liner. It also has a waterproof but breathable liner as well. Those are very easy to remove or install depending on how you want to wear this and which configuration. And underneath that, we also have protective armor as well. CE approved armor in the shoulders and elbows. That'll help keep you safe and you can upgrade those options and you can include them on the back panel. It also has an insert area for a chest panel as well. So really a lot of coverage built into this. Notice the pockets. These lower two on the front, those are gonna be waterproof. The rest are not. As we turn to the back of the jacket, See all the great reflectives here? One large pocket down low as well, some vents on the back. There's really so much going on with this that you need to take a look at the product page, dig into it. Speedy does a great job of just putting tons and tons of features into this. Retainers on the zippers, things like that. So really dig into this because it's a high dollar piece that can be worth the money. Now as for the pants, these are from Scorpion. These are the Seattle waterproof pants. These were released, both these products actually came out in fall this year. So what you're going to find with the pants is again, a textile material. These are 600 denier materials. Also reinforced up to 1680 denier on the knee area. So that's gonna be the main impact. You'll find armor located in those regions as well. Full waterproof zippers down the legs. It's gonna help you get in and out of this. It is an overpants, so you can wear it with or without your regular jeans on underneath. Matt is wearing them with his jeans on underneath, so you can see just how this would fit. Now, good reflectives there. Reinforcements on the seat. Take a turn here. We'll get a look at the backside. Very straightforward, but you'll notice some cargo options on the front of the legs. So when we're going to be riding down the road, we don't really want anything in the hip pockets. It's nice to have them located in these locations on the thigh. So really a great set of pants. Thanks, Magnum. Get out of here. We'll look at the rest of this stuff. Now, these are the Icon 1000 Truant boots. They're available, as you see, in the brown or in the black colorway as well. The thing I like the most about it is the way that it blends a traditional work boot with more of an urban feel. So, you have this heavy-duty, top-grain leather construction. It's going to have these traditional style of, of, of laces, but it also has this nice leather strap across the side. That's going to have this cool buckle system as well to help keep it cinched down. But, underneath that, reinforcements in the toe area. So, it's motorcycle-specific gear. It also has a reinforcement in the sole. But, if you'll check, a look, check out the sole, it's going to be more of a tennis shoe style. So this is where it sort of blends into that urban crossover. Street bikes, cruisers, I can see a lot of different people wearing this. Remember it's available in different colors. Now this is the MC750 from Motocentric. It's going to be a smart space battery charger that keeps all of your toys, ATVs, UTV, side-by-sides, bikes obviously, jet skis, whatever it might be, topped up and ready to go when you are. Keep your battery in good shape, you'll be much happier. This is going to use 750 milliamps, it's going to charge your battery from dead or it will also trickle charge if you want to just keep one of your machines hooked up long term. Very handy to have in the garage, nice long cord on it, and it's got a pre-wired system so you can actually just put that on and never have to worry about it again. You just plug it in and take it off when you need to, or it has alligator clip options if that works better. Now, we want to keep our bike safe when we're out on the road. This is from Xena. This is their X6 disc alarm. It's going to be a lock and a 120 decibel audible alarm. It's going to draw a lot of attention for one, but let's just make some, uh, a note real quick. It's small. It's very easy to carry. Those are the pros. Now, it's not going to prevent someone from just lifting your bike up and taking it off. However, it does give you some modicum of protection. It has a sensor in it, so if your bike gets jostled, if someone does try to lift it, it's going to go off, and at least it'll give you that amount of noise going off and attract some people nearby. It has three keys that come with it. 
plus one to remove your alarm system. A very nice little uh, lock here. It's inexpensive and it gives you that extra layer of safety. Now, these gloves in front, they're going to give you safety against the elements. These are from Revit. It's called their Boxer H2O glove. It's going to have a waterproof membrane built into it, but it has a kangaroo leather construction. So it's extremely supple, very uh, comfortable to wear. Nice padding on the fingertips. It does have hard protection in the knuckles, but a nice traditional cuff up here. That's kind of interesting. It's knit, so it's going to actually help keep that a little bit warmer. It'll suck inside of your jacket and it'll be very uh, comfortable in that interface area. Also, it uses the connect fingertips. You'll find them on the index finger and on the thumb. So if you want to use your, your touchscreen gadgets like our phones, very handy to have. Check out this showy. There's nothing really new about it in terms of its construction, but this is the RF1200 and it does get this new graphic package. This is called the Cruise model. I really like this. If you're into classic cars, classic autos, check this thing out. It basically looks like the old Chevy Bel Air emblem on the side. Very cool looking helmet. It's going to give you that AIM Plus outer shell. Extremely lightweight and strong. Very comfortable moisture wicking fabric on the interior. A pin lock ready shield. All of those high end features that we've come to expect from the RF1200. And it's in this nice new colorway. So check that out. A really sharp looking lid. Up front here, this is also for sport bike applications. Now, not so much wintertime stuff, but but perhaps you're working on your bike for their upcoming racing season. This is going to be a great option. These are actually clip-on handlebars from Renthal. And the nice thing about these is that they offer you a couple different modes of adjustment. You can see five millimeter increments all the way around this. So you can rotate this on your fork tube. That's going to give you more or less sweep in your bar. Also, you'll notice the laser etched adjustments on the bar itself. So as you slide these through, you can adjust the position in or out, figure out which one works best for your riding style, and then adjust them accordingly. The nylon bar ends are removable if you'd like to, but a great option. Not only does it give you adjustment, but if you crash, you can actually remove these, purchase them individually, and it's gonna be a little bit cheaper option there, so it's not gonna cost you as much down the road. Great for racing applications, any sport bike, people interested in track days, take a look at these. Now, this is definitely a winter time option. So this is from Pete, it's their original boot dryer, I've had one of these before, they re really work well. So for street bikes or dirt bikes, you can use these with your motocross boots or any type of riding shoe. It's going to push air through your boots and get them dry very, very quickly. It doesn't generate heat, it's not a fire hazard. It's something that you plug in, it just has a very gentle air cycle and it does a great job. So this is going to also apply not only for your motorcycle boots, but any type of footwear you might have. So really a great option, regardless of if you're on or off the bike. Speaking of on and off the bike, let's take a look at our GoPro clip of the month. Now let's take a look at some off-road offerings. What Curtis is wearing here today is going to be an MSR jacket. This is brand new. It's called the Explorer Altura, and it is very, very cool. It's actually more of a dual sport type jacket. It has street rated CE approved armor in the shoulder and the elbows. That's really gonna help give you better coverage. You'll also notice things like the reflective materials. That's gonna help you out on the street. However, it is designed to work very well for off-road applications. Now it's going to have lots of, of venting built into it. You're gonna find adjustable vents, also tons of storage options, so that's gonna help whether you're in the dirt or out on the highway. You can see those pockets on the front. You can see those zippered vents like we mentioned. Curtis, will show us the back. The, taller, uh, the tall collar here is also lined with the neoprene material. Very comfortable, but this thing has been reinforced like we mentioned. You can see it on the backs of the elbows and notice the huge storage pocket that's operated. It has a storm flap and then a zipper underneath. So you can actually get quite a bit stored on this jacket. Now, as we go inside, you'll take a look at it. There are no liner systems to move in or out. There's no removable liner, it just uses the standard mesh, but more storage in here. I'm really impressed with how many pockets it holds on the inside. And you'll notice things like this on the cuff. It has this nice little thumb hole built into it. Nice details throughout this jacket. Now, underneath that, Curtis is wearing pure motocross gear. So whether it's motocross, off-road, this is the type of stuff that you're gonna wear because it's designed for heavy duty work. This is going to be a lightweight jersey. This is the Alias A2 gear. Now they offer the A2 and the A1, which is more expensive. So this app for, uh, actually offers a lot of value for what you're paying. It's going to have sublimated graphics, 
Go ahead and turn for us, Curtis. You can see what it looks like on the back. Nice clean colors, nice clean lines, lots of different options in terms of sizing and colors. But as you go from the jersey to the pant, which are sold separately, the pants are going to be a nice lightweight option as well. You will not find a lot of TPR badging on this, which really helps keep the weight down. So standard closure system on it, but one of the things I like about it, they've actually added leather knees to both legs. So that's gonna help with the heat protection, really get a little bit longevity out of these. Nice expansion on the back of the legs as well, and through the top of the seat, you can see some of those panels. This is great looking gear from Alias to take a look at it, see if it's right for you. Thanks, Curtis. Now, this is something that's going to be a little bit more expensive than that gear you saw. However, this is purely for protection and this is from Mobius. It is a brand new product. This is called the X8 Knee Brace. Now, they're going to be sold in a pair. Everything else I've shown you today, you can purchase right now at Motorcycle Superstore. These aren't actually expected until the middle of the month sometime. So, this is a sneak peek. These are not going to be something that you're going to see every day at the motocross track, at least not yet. So, what you get with the X8 is a really interesting knee brace in terms of the way it's constructed. Now, this is something that actually Ryan Villapoto has been a part of in terms of R&D. He's been wearing these for the past couple years. We all know about his knee problems. So, good to see him wearing quality protection, and this is what he chooses to go with. Now, the really cool thing about this, the reason it's called the X8 and the defining characteristic on this, all stems from the back piece here. This nice big cross brace, this is actually how it lashes on and secures around the back side of your leg, but as you'll notice, it uses a steel cable. Now, this is essentially an oversized BOA system. I'm only saying that because we're, most of us are familiar with that technology. It's not made by BOA, however. This is proprietary to Mobius. And one of the things that they have done here, they've made this ratcheting system that's, that's located on the top of the thigh, and it's really easy to use because it has nice big cables. These are 19 strands of stainless steel wire in these cables, and as you can see on the backside, they go into this cross pattern. So the ratcheting mechanism up front is very easy to activate. You simply twist the dial, cinch it down, and when you want to release it, there's this yellow button above. You, you lift it up, and it comes right back off. So very easy to get in and out of, but it cinches this thing down in a way that's not traditional in terms of the other straps, which you can also see it does use several of those as well. So this thing's really going to adhere to your leg. It's also extremely lightweight. It's a glass reinforced uh, resin on the exterior construction. It does use aluminum. This component here, the dial, also these pieces on the knee, these are going to be forged aluminum. So they're very strong. It's also very lightweight. Check these things out. See if they're right from you. Again, it's going to be about mid-December before we see them start showing up. And you're going to be looking at around the $600 price tag. They're only sold in pairs. They're not sold individually. So uh, it's a little bit of an investment, but some great new technology to hit the market for knee braces. Now we've shown you some gear. We've shown you protection but you might as well have a place to store all that. This is from O'Neill, it's their MX2 gear bag. Now I will say, it's got some nice features built into it, but it's not the biggest gear bag on the market. It's actually relatively compact. So if you have helmet, braces, chest protector, boots, all the stuff top to bottom, you may want to look for something a little larger, but uh, particularly for youth, this might be a great option, or if you just simply don't need one that's huge and oversized, this is the way to go. What I really like about it, great uh, aesthetics here, it has this nice print on it, it has of course the carrying handle and the shoulder strap as well, which is removable, but it has these uh, pockets on the exterior as well, zippered pockets on both sides, and you can see these vent systems that run all the way around it, so it's really going to help keep your gear from getting moldy and disgusting on the inside. It has an ID badge up top, this is a great option if you're looking to carry your gear around with you and like we said it's not oversized so take a look at it see if it's right for you time for our writing tip of the month where we all get to become better writers so we've talked about gear prep in the past we've talked about bike prep for december we're going to talk about on bike riding skills something that's going to make you a better rider in the winter time months. Now, for those of you who are actually out on your motorcycle this time of year, I salute you. I'm a pretty fair weather guy when it comes to street bikes. However, this is something that all people should be aware of because we will get caught out in the rain at some point. The tips we'll go over today are really good for newer or less experienced riders. However, those of you with lots of miles and lots of years under your belt, always good to have a refresher. So, Let's go over the top three obstacles that you're going to face when you're out riding in the rain. The first of these is going to be painted lines. They're on every road all over the place. And in the summertime, we don't notice them at all. We just go right across. But in the winter, those painted lines, whites, yellows, doesn't matter, they become like ice. So you really wanna pay attention to those things, especially anytime the bike is tipped over. 
All of these slippery items that we're going to talk about are best to tackle in a straight up and down position. If you can avoid being leaned over, that's the best way to do it. So watch out for pain in lines. Also, manhole covers. Anything that's metal, manhole covers, train tracks are a uh, concern as well, and also those big metal plates that you see in construction zones. Anything that's metal is going to have less grip than asphalt, so really watch out for those. And of course, standing water. I'm not talking about just that sheen of water that's all over everything. I'm talking about puddles. Anywhere where you might get any amount of water that will cause you to hydroplane. So really watch out for that. One good tip for dealing with standing water is to keep an eye out for beading. If you see individual beads of water, that would indicate that there's actually oil underneath that, which makes it even worse. So those are the top three things that you need to watch out for. Now let's go over the top three tips in how to best manage these types of obstacles. So the first one is going to be identify these things early. You need to really start looking ahead further in the wet weather. Now, this is a good practice to do all times of the year. However, during this time of year, visibility is lower, it's darker, there's cloud cover, it's raining. So identifying these things early means having good vision. Look down the road, pay attention to where you're going to, and then think about some other tips too, like either have a wiper on your glove that you can clear your vision with, or consider using a Rain-X product or something to help keep that moisture off of your visor. That's gonna help you identify things early on. Now, the second tip in order to manage these things, be smooth and relaxed. It's instinct, it's nature for us to get tightened up when we're nervous. When we see things that are freaking us out, we get this death grip on the bike and that's not what we wanna do. When you're tight, all of those inputs through the handlebars are much more herky-jerky. So, it's contrary to what we wanna do, but try to relax on the motorcycle. Remember, focus on proper riding position. Engage your core muscles. Use that to get the weight off of the handlebars. This is really important for sport bike riders. A lot of weight on the front end, that's going to give you obviously more chances to push that front tire. So try to get your weight off the bars, have a loose grip on those handlebars, those grips, and try to be relaxed. This is something that will come with more practice and more experience, but it'll help you be a smoother rider overall, even when it isn't wet outside. Now, the third thing to do is to increase your following distance. This sounds like a no-brainer, but what this does is it allows you to better perform the first two tips that we went over, early identification and being smooth. If you give yourself more room between you and the people in front of you or you and the people around you, that's going to allow you to, one, spot those obstacles before they come up and just surprise you out of nowhere. It's also going to allow you to see it, anticipate it, and then keep yourself calm and smooth. So follow those three tips and it'll help you get through this wet season a little bit better. Congratulations for riding through the winter. You are a soldier, but hopefully we'll keep you safe all year long. Do you have a writing tip that you'd like to share? If so, submit it to us for a chance to be featured on our monthly kickstart video. You just send those in to our email address, videoteam at motorcycle-superstore.com. This can be an on-bike skill, it can be something to do with bike maintenance or prepping your gear. Whatever it is, send them in and we'll have a chance to showcase those. The same thing goes for a writing clip of the month. If you have a particular onboard footage or a regular clip of you doing something particularly awesome, or maybe not so awesome like a total wipeout, go ahead and send those in for a chance to be submitted as well. I'm looking forward to a more interactive experience with our viewers, so I'm excited about these submissions. time for our super deal of the month and in December we're going to look at the Matrix M1 Fatty Tie Down. Typically this is a $50 item but we'll sell it this month for $18.95 so it's over 60% off. What's nice about these is that they're going to work for anybody who's tying things down in their pickup or trailer. Street bikes, dirt bikes, doesn't really matter. So they're rated at 500 pounds and they have lots of nice features built into them so let's check those out. What I like about it on the top end is that it has the soft strap already stitched on. You don't have to have it separate where they can they get lost in the back of your pickup or whatever. This is always stitched on, you'll never lose it. So if you want to take care of your handlebars, this is a great option. It uses a rubber coated hook, so you don't have to use the soft tie if you don't like to. And you'll notice, as you can see, the inch and a half webbing pulls through this heavy duty knurling to get a great bite on it. At the bottom end, you're looking at a swivel carabiner. I love this style because it allows the spring-loaded carabiner to stay in place. Once you hook it to the bed of your pickup, it's not going to fall off while you're manipulating the top half of it. Also, once you get it twisted up, which is a common thing, you don't have to worry about that either because you can simply untwist it using the 360 degree swivel. Very handy, your tie downs will look good and they'll be secure. One more cool feature about these, if this were hooked up to the top of the bike, we'd cinch it down and then you always have this end that just flops around. You can either tie it off or whatever, it's an extra step. 
The M1 Fatty gives you the option of using this plastic slider. You can route the extra strap down through the slider like this, and then you simply slide it down when you're finished tying down your bike, and that's going to keep it from flopping around. It's not going to smack your machine, it won't fray out the end of your tie down, it's going to be a little bit cleaner looking. So great options here from M1, check them out, again, they're less than 19 bucks, so you really can't go wrong for something of this caliber. We thought that November was slow for the moto industry, but December is even slower. Pretty much dead around here. However, we did find a few items that you might look forward to this month. So starting on December 6th, it's the first round of the FIM Super Enduro Championship. That takes place in Poland. It's essentially the European version of our American Enduro Cross series. So lots of hardcore off-road stuff stuffed inside tiny little stadiums. Good stuff to watch. Also on the 12th, the KTM Ride Orange Tour is wrapping up in Lake Elsinore, California. So SoCal guys get one last chance to ride some orange machines. That's for motocross bikes only. But also on the 12th through the 14th, our East Coast friends get to enjoy the IMS New York show. So you get out, take a look at some new bikes and new products that are coming out in the upcoming months. Now this time of year, there are some other things that you might want to look forward to. So basically all month long, on any Sunday, the newest version of that movie is going to be showing at select theaters throughout the country. Go online, find out where that's showing, and perhaps you get a chance to view it in a local theater. Also, this is a great time of year to do a ride for toys. Lots of local chapters are going to be collecting toys for tots or whatever. You can find organizations, and it's a good opportunity to support the local communities and do it on your motorcycle. So good stuff there. Now. Let's finish it up with our subscribe and win for this month. We got a great prize. It's going to be a set of Pirelli tires. Your choice, a front and a rear, doesn't matter if it's dirt or street, whatever. Whatever it is, you're going to be able to pick it, fit it on your bike, and it'll be great. The idea is you subscribe to our YouTube channel and you're automatically entered to win. So check it out and good luck to you this month. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for sticking around and watching our December Kickstart video. If you would like to send in your own clip of the month or a riding tip, please do so. You can send them to me at videoteam at motorcycle-superstore.com. I'll sift through those. I would love to see submissions from our actual viewers, so please do that. Now, keep in mind, there are all those holiday guides like we mentioned before, so feel free to sift through those. If you're still out there soldiering through the cold weather, good luck to you. Stay safe this month, and we'll see you next time at motorcyclesuperstore.com.